Okay, so I'm something of a, a skip magpie. My neighbour is throwing away a whole load of heaters, and here they are. This is a, a really cheap panel heater. Here we've got a tower heater. These are both resistive heaters. Uh, here's an oil-filled heater. So he's got a group of heaters he just put in the bin, and I said to him, can I have them? And he said, yeah, sure. I think he was a bit bemused. But even something like this, which are really quite simple and cheap, can be a brilliant source of parts for doing projects. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to do some projects with these things. Now, when you pull these apart, the bits in them, actually, are quite expensive to buy separately. I mean, I know I got this broken, and so it's not going to cost me anything. But to be honest, if you bought one of these new, took apart the bits, kept the bits, it would be less expensive than trying to buy those bits separately to build a project, which is crazy if you think about it. I guess that's just mass production. These guys buy things for next to nothing. I mean, this thing, I think it's about 15 or 20 pounds, which is like really, really cheap. Anyway, we're going to do some projects with these things because they're just too awesome. So let's get on with one. This is obviously a tower heater. It's got wire in there and a few electronic controls and bits and pieces like that. But what's really interesting about this one is inside here is a squirrel cage rotor and that's what we actually want. So taking it apart, really, it's, it's dead simple. It's always the same thing. Just have a look on the case and find the screws. When you find the screws, sometimes they're special and you need a special adapter for them, but you can get one of those from the tool shop for about five pounds or so. It's a whole set of them. Uh, sometimes they're just normal screws. Just undo every screw you see. If one is a little bit um, difficult to undo, persuade it apart with a hammer and chisel. All I'm going to do really is undo all of those screws and lay out the bits. Okay, I was wrong. It's not a heater, it's a fan. And I must admit I'm really pleased because there's a huge haul of really cool bits in here. There's a nice on-off switch, there's a, a selector switch there. I found this in it as the timer mechanism. It's a little bit of clockwork that runs for one hour. I mean, if we stick a little motor on that, I mean, I'm talking a tiny motor, but we could run that for an hour as being a kind of a, a battery. I'm going to have a look at that in a different project because that's just awesome. Nice capacitor. We've got a synchronous motor here. We know we can make those into hand crank generators. No worries at all. Um, here is a squirrel cage motor that was at the bottom of the fan. And it's a fairly common kind of fan motor. They're low torque, but you find them all the time. And here is the actual rotor that we were looking at. And this is the bit that I'm interested in. So let me take you outside and show you why. Okay, so I've come outside. It's a slightly windy day. It's a little bit of rain. But this is why I'm interested in this. So if I pop the other bearing on and just hold that up. <laughs> that will spin in the lightest of breezes. Now, I couldn't make anything as well balanced as that. So, just rescuing that from there, you've got to think vertical wind turbine, don't you? So, all we have to do is bolt a motor onto the bottom here, get it into the wind, and we should be able to make a vertical wind turbine out of that piece of cake. That's the plan, anyway, because I've been asked a number of times to look at that, and to be honest, I've been waiting for this. I want to do as little work as possible with this to turn it into a wind turbine, a vertical wind turbine. And it's got some really good attributes to it that would be a challenge for me to do. But since they're all in one piece, it's going to be really easy to adapt. There is the bearing for that bit. So we're going to use that bit just as it is. This bit is the bit that the original motor attached to. And I've taken the original motor to pieces. It is unfortunately an induction motor, so there's no magnets in that, so we can't just stick the motor back in and use it as a generator, which is a real shame. But what I do have is this, which is a 775 DC motor, and it came with this attachment on it, so all I need is something this big to go to something this big, and I can basically just bolt the motor straight back on. Now I'm going to want to have those bearings in line, and they originally came in line when they were the motor. So the motor 
end plates already have the right bearings in the correct alignment with them. Here is the body of the motor incidentally, which is the um, stator coil. So I'm going to take a bit of bar, which is this stuff here, and this bar is the same, more or less, diameter as this. So I'll flatten off an end, which will stick in there. Then I'll turn another end down, which will go in there, and we'll have our couple, and we can basically just bolt this DC motor onto the bottom of this fan. And because that's DC with magnets, we have our generator. So there's the little adapter bar made, so that flattened end sticks nicely in the squirrel cage, that thinned out end sticks nicely in the motor, and I've stuck a couple of bearings on it that I extracted out of the old induction motor. Okay, so that's everything we need to do. All we need to do now is put a little structure together to hold everything in place. Okay, and that's it. What a piece of cake. This stuff it's made of, actually, is something I've talked about before. It's called Builder's Board. It's a uh, UPVC coated foam. It's really very rigid, very stable, easy to cut without massive machine tools. You can do this with a carpet knife or a handsaw. Uh, glues together with super glue or crazy glue and the bond between the plastic and the crazy glue is actually stronger than the original plastic. So although it uh, looks like a really sort of flimsy plastic structure, it's actually really strong for what it is. Now I've obviously put it on a great big block of board here because I want to show you something else and I'm going to do that in a minute in the wind. But if we were doing this as an actual vertical turbine, then this block would really just be a strip. Uh, or you might want to ha attach it to something where you have a couple of little angles coming out here set to the wall and it just attaches to the wall. If you want an example of these kind of things uh, attached to a freestanding structure, uh, Iceland's got them all over the place. Uh, and that's exactly what they do. They just put a clip on the top here, fasten it to something like a telegraph pole. Um, in vertical orientation, obviously, that's how it would be. It'd just stand like that and you'd fix that thinner piece to a building or maybe to something that swivels around. So that's your vertical orientation. And let's go and see if we can generate something from this in a little bit of wind. All right, so I've come out to see if I can catch a bit of wind. No problem at all, generating about 12 volts out of that. And that would be in a vertical uh, position. The thing about these squirrel cage motors is this, and this is really cool. So that's what's awesome about them, is that they don't have to only be in the vertical, they can be flat as well. So there you go. Okay, the basic idea is grab an upright fan, pull out the squirrel cage, glue a motor onto the bottom, and you're off. Now, there's a ton of ways of making this better than I made it, I'm 100% sure. One thing did occur to me, actually, is we had like a kind of funnel here, and we put a jet of air over there. That might be really cool, especially if we do it in this horizontal position instead of this upright position. In this upright position, you don't want a bit of chunky board behind it. You want something nice and thin. But that idea, glue a moat onto the bottom of a squirrel cage rotor, makes you a vertical um, generator. And that was just so easy. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching and see you again.